Good morning, everybody. We are here in the arena. Uh, we are going to sign up for the qualifier plan this weekend. So very excited. Um, I've only done a tiny bit of Dominaria Limited, but it, it does seem really fun. So anyways, we are going to begin. Uh, this is sealed uh, best of one. So we will play until we get to two match losses. Let's take a look at what we've got. I actually love Limited, so I, I know most of my channel is constructed um, for Standard, but I, I'm, I'm meaning to put up some um, <clears throat> Limited Draft videos, and I, I absolutely love Limited, so. Okay, here we go. Let's take a look and see what we got. Um, All right, first of all, let's take a look at our rares. We've got Sulkanar the Tainted. Um, what else? We have the World Spell. Threats Undetected. Korean Beast Caller, so a couple of green rares already. Um, Rada's Firebrand, which I've played with in Standard. And let's see what else. Okay, we should have one more rare. Yeah, maybe I'm just missing it here, but... Oh, here we go. Valiant Veteran. Okay, so a couple of green rares. Korean Beast Caller. This is a fabulous playable. Um, whenever you cast a creature spell, there's one, one counter on Korean Beast Caller. And then when it dies, you distribute those counters among any number of target creatures you control, where X is the number of plus one, plus one counters on Beast Caller. So. This card is um, constructed worthy. It's great. Radha's Firebrand. This is one that you see in like Mono Red Aggro, um, which basically prevents uh, opposing creatures from from blocking, and then you can pump it for domain with um, looks like six mana here to give it plus two plus two, but then that's reduced by the number of basic land types you have. So can be pretty powerful. Uh, the World Spell I have not seen. Okay, look at the top seven cards of your library. You can reveal a non-saga permanent and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Um, okay. And then put two non-saga permanents from your hand on the battlefield. Um, this Potentially is all right, but it, 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 in limited, this is probably not that amazing. This is more of a, you know, Timmy goes to Pro Tour kind of card. <clears throat> with um, it kind of reminds me of like Tooth and Nail. Um, Sulkanar the Tainted. Let's take a look. I remember Sulkanar the Swamp King from from Legends way way back. Um, okay, so five mana, three different colors, five five. And then at the beginning of your end step, choose one that hasn't been chosen. Either draw a card, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life, or he deals three damage to up to one other target creature or planeswalker. Um, or exile him and return to the battlefield under an opponent's control. Interesting. Um, yeah, if you've got the colors, this looks fabulous. And then threats undetected, search your library up to four creature cards with different powers and reveal them. An opponent chooses two of those cards, shuffle the chosen cards into your library, put the rest into your hand. Okay, yeah. I mean, this this kind of reminds me 
of um, God, there was a card back in Kamigawa. It was sort of like this, where you chose four different cards and they had to choose two and give them to you. And it was totally broken and constructed at the time. Um, this, this is, you know, I guess it's, it's um, you're getting card advantage here. So, I don't know how good it'll be, but it looks, it looks interesting. It's, it's cheap enough. Um, it doesn't put anything on the battlefield, um, but, you know, it might be a slow enough format that that's okay. Alright, so let's take a look and kind of see which colors we have the most sort of going on. Um, if we can find a way to play these three colors, Solkonar is quite good. Um, what other multicolor cards do we have? We have Najal the Stormrunner. So five mana, five four. You can cast sorcery spells as though they had flash. Whenever Najal attacks, you may pay two if you do. You, when you cast your neck instant or sorcery, copy it. Okay, I mean, at, at the very least, it's a 5-4 flyer for 5, which is fine. Um, and then if you randomly get the upside, that's great. Aaron Benali is Ruin. Okay, 3-3 three, three menace for 3. And then sack creatures to give counters. Yeah, he seems great also. Um... Raph, Weatherlight Stalwart. I kind of actually played this card um, a little bit constructed when I was trying out like a Bant token strategy. So, yeah, I can see him being quite good. It, it sort of reminds me of the um, the one mana unicorn from the uh, the last limited set, where <clears throat> it just sort of sits around at the beginning, but then you can start getting real value and just like pump up your team. Giving vigil Vigilance to all your creatures, even just Vigilance alone, is very powerful in a limited format. And then also giving an Anthem effect seems very, very good. Okay, Zarajan and Sign of Afrava. 4-4, four, for four, 5. Um, when it becomes tapped, put up a sun plus one counter on each creature you control, toughness less than the number of basic land types. Yeah, seems really good. Um, so far, all the multicolor cards are great. Erg Spawn of Turg. Um, let's see, three mana. It's an X5. His power is equal to the number of land cards in your graveyard. At the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may put that into your graveyard, and then sack a land, you gain two life. Okay, so. I don't know, it seems kind of dirtily. Um, but it seems like you could grow them fairly quickly. So it, it's probably fine. I mean, like at the very least, it's like a wall um, that you can like grow late game. And I think in limited, you know, you probably have time to sort of mess around long enough to make this good. Like especially late game, I mean, you can turn this into a decently powerful card. But um, it's, I think it's the least powerful of all these. And, and I could be totally wrong, but... Um, all right, so then kind of let's take a look at how many cards we have in each color and how playable they might be. So white, we've got Runic Shot, which is good removal. Happy to play this. Um, Benalish Sleeper, a solid 3-1 for 2. Um, yeah, not exciting, but it fits the curve. Destroy Evil. Okay, you've got Removal. Great. Um, Valiant Veteran. 2-2 two, two for 2. You might get, like, random upside on this, but for the most part, this is going to be... This is going to be okay. Uh, Cavalier. I've actually, I, in the draft that I did, I played with this guy, and he was quite good. Um, just have a little extra value. And then Enlist is surprisingly good. Join Forces. Okay, a little trick. Mesa Cavalier. Yeah, this guy's fine. 2 1 Flyer for 3. Griffin Protector. Uh, this guy's quite good, actually, in a draft that I had. Um, if you can get any of like the token making stuff, 
or you know keep playing creatures um, this guy can be quite good rogue charge all right well little, little um, pump all your creatures effect kind of nice and wing mantle chaplain 03 for four defender okay make a one one bird okay I mean if you have like some number of defenders. There's kind of like an offender theme going on in draft. Um, this, this could be fine. Like it's it's kind of dirtily, but it's it's fine. So the white is pretty good actually. Almost every white card is playable. And then yeah, so we've got ten ten playables here in white. Um, in blue we have combat research. Okay. This is okay. I mean, like in a in a deck with like a lot of flyers, this this might be you know a little bit better, obviously, or some sort of evasion. But I don't know that this is that great. Um, it's fairly low investment; it's only one mana. But if they have removal, you can just you know basically be a net loss. So I don't know. I'm not excited by this as much. Rona's vortex. Okay, you've got a basic unsummon. It's fine. Shore up. Okay. Um, give a creature hexproof. Yeah, it's it's fine. It's not like super exciting, but it's fine. Timely interference. Okay. Um yeah, I mean, you can force a block, but mostly this is like a, a cantrip, right? You're just drawing a card. Um, you know, this is filler. Um, oh, actually, I forgot to mention in the white. So I have multiple copies of these cards. That's actually very important. I forgot to mention. So I have three Mesa Cavaliers and two Destroy Evil. So the white is actually, it's even better than I thought we have like 13 or 14 playables. Um, white's looking pretty good right now. So timely interference is kind of meh. Yeah. Found in the third path. You can cast an instant or sorcery with mana from one, value one or two from your hand with paying its cost. And then you mill four cards, exile instant or sorcery, copy it. Yeah, this is kind of meh. Probably you need sort of a constructed thing to set this up. That looks pretty bad. Um, Academy Wall, 05 Defender. When you cast an instant or sorcery, draw a card. If you do, discard a card. Yeah, I'm not like, super excited about walls that don't have any power. Um, this seems very, very sort of below average. Um, I guess if you have like a, you know, a lot of instant sorceries, whatever, but. Not excited by this. Phyrexian Espionage. Uh, draw two cards if it was kicked. Yeah, this card is fine, actually. I think I ran this in a draft deck. Um, perfectly fine card. And then Tolarian Geyser. Okay. You can return a creature to their hand. Um, yeah, this is fine. Not exciting because it's sorcery speed, but it's fine. And then two tide pool turtle. Um, I think this guy is fine. It's you know like if you have like in the defender deck or if you have you know evasion creatures like it's not it's certainly not getting in anytime soon. But the scry gives it something to do, and it's it's a two five. It's a big you know big wall basically. I think it's a fine card. Not excited by it, you know for the most part, but it's fine. So blue seems pretty underwhelming. Um, let's take a look and double check. The only blue multicolored we have, well, we actually do have a few. We have Najal, which seems pretty good. Depends on how good the red is. Um, Raph, which seems quite good. Uh, we know the white is good already. The question is, do we want to bother pairing blue with it? Because blue seems pretty meh. And Sulkan are the Tainted, which is also quite good but also depends on the red and the black. So I think blue is probably out, but let's let's keep our eyes open. 
Okay, in black we have Battlefly Swarm. Yeah, this, this creature is great. Um, one mana flyer and can get Death Touch. Um, very happy to run this. Kind of reminds me of like Fang of Shijeki, but is more useful because it flies. Um, yeah. Urborg Repossession. Okay, return to your creature card from your graveyard to your hand. You gain two life. If it was kicked, <clears throat> return another target permanent. Yeah, I mean, this this is great. You're getting back um, two cards for one. So you're getting some advantage here if you can go black green. If it's like just black, it's sort of meh. You probably only really play this if you are also playing green. But if you are, it's fine. Battle Rage Blessing. Okay, yeah, this is fine. Like, it's not exciting, but it's fine. You can save a guy and also kill one of theirs and sort of a little trick. So I think this is, like, probably fine as, like, a one-of in a deck or something like that. Blight Pile. Um, yeah, okay, so this is a nice wall. Um, because you can actually kill them with it. Like, it'll take a long time, but you can actually extract value with this. So I'm a fan of this card. Splatter Goblin. Uh, yeah, this is fine. 2-1 that, you know, throws around a minus one, minus one counter when it dies. I think it's great. And then we've got Toxic Abomination, 3-2 two for 2, pay 2 life. This is the kind of card that might be really good or really bad, depending on the set, and I just don't know. Like, if there's a lot of two-power creatures, then this is pretty bad. But if there are not that many, and it can actually, like, trade up against, like, a three-toughness creature, then it's quite good. So I just don't know if this is a good card yet. It's probably fine. Tribute to Urborg, okay. Minus two, minus two, and you can give it more. Yeah, good removal. This is fine. If you're playing blue also, it becomes great. All right, aggressive sabotage. Um, I'm not a huge fan of discard two for three. Like, it's fine. In limited, it's certainly fine to run one of these. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I guess if you're playing red, it gets a little better, but it's still not that exciting. This seems like a card I probably would not run. And I, I'm sure there's the deck for it, you know, where if you have nothing else to do on turn three, whatever. Um, it is technically card advantage, so the only problem is if you draw a late game and they don't have a hand, this is just bad. That's why I don't like this card. Okay, Baldivian Atrocity. 2-3 Menace. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, return target creature card. Um, yeah, this is fine. Even if you don't have the kicker, like a 2-3 Menace for three, is, is fine. Like, you've got Evasion. You know, it's not crazy exciting, but it's fine. It's it's filler. Okay, Yuri Soul Tender. 3-1. Um... Yeah, this is great. You're getting, you're hopefully trading with any creature and then you're just getting something back. That seems great. So we have some filler black cards. We have, you know, a piece of good removal, a couple of good creatures. Um, if we can pair it with another color like green or it seems like it might go somewhere. Um, so the black is, the black is, I would say, probably average to good. You know, most of the, of the cards here are playable. Um, and the ones that aren't, you know, amazing are still at least filler. So I think black is doing pretty well. Not as good as the white, for sure. And then it's much better than the blue. The blue is pretty atrocious. Okay, let's take a look at the red. Uh, we have Flowstone Infusion. This is great. I've played this in a draft deck, and um, this card is phenomenal. Great removal, instant speed. Yeah, you can. I guess if you have a big creature, you can like get the last two points out of nowhere with this. Um, so it just has a lot of flexibility, which is exactly what you're looking for in a Magic card. And it costs one mana. This card is phenomenal. Hammer hand. Okay. 
Okay, so you can like make one creature not block, and then you can also give a creature plus one plus one in haste. Yeah, this is actually okay. I don't think it's great because it is an aura, and the problem with all auras is that if they respond with removal, you just get nothing. So this is, I would say, a fairly low investment. Like you're not spending a lot of mana to do it, and the effect is actually pretty decent. Um, like giving a creature haste that you know you just brought in is actually a pretty big game. And then also making like their best creature not be able to block um, for one turn is still great. So I think this is actually pretty good. I wouldn't say great because it's an aura. Okay, Phoenix Chick. This is a great constructed card. Um, I don't know about limited though. I mean, like it's probably fine. I think it seems like it's filler because a one one is really just you know this is going to get brick walled by any X2 flyer, and I don't know how many of those there are, but I think that, you know, on the other hand, like, attacking with three or more creatures could easily happen, so so maybe it's good. I'd say it's probably average. Furious Bellow. Okay. Third creature gets three plus and first strike and scry. Yeah, this is, this is like a good trick. Um, first strike is really a big deal when you're looking at creature fights, and so... Like, if this was, like, plus three, plus zero, and trample, you know, I mean, it'd be good in green decks, but plus three, plus zero on first strike is good in any deck. It's going to, like, first strike is one of the things that, like, most screws up combat math. And then the scry on the end just kind of gives it a little bit extra. So I, I like this card. Let's see, if you do amplifier... When Amplifier enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, return target creature and opponent controls its owner hand. Okay. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery. Yeah. I mean, in red blue, this is actually. You know, this is a card in red blue. Um, I think. I guess you'd have to have like a pretty heavy instant sorcery deck for this to be any good if you don't. If you can't kick it. So I think in red blue, this is good. And in not red blue, <laughs> this is not good. Um, yeah. So probably, unless you're playing blue, this is bad. Lightning Strike obviously speaks for itself. Constructed worthy. This card is amazing. Um, great removal. Yeah. You play it every time. Uh, Rada's Firebrand. Yeah. Again, so this is, again, a constructed worthy card. Um, it may not be, so strangely, it may not be as good in limited because of the, of the one toughness um you know and so like if you have like a big um kind of creature standoff this is actually pretty bad because you're not going to be able to make them um make it so they can't block it on the other hand if you're playing like a three color deck and you can give this thing you know plus two plus two it gets a lot better um you know or like a, I guess even a two color deck is fine so it has late game potential. The other thing is that with domain, like you can cast this effect multiple times. So it's not like you only do that one time. Or actually, never mind. <laughs> you can do that exactly one time. All right. So it's 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 good. I think it's you're definitely running it. It's a rare. Um, yeah. Yavimaya Steel Crusher, um, two two enlist, and then sack it to get an artifact. Yeah. This is. Perfectly serviceable 2-2 two -two that might have a random upside. Yeah, you, you'd run it, but you're you're not like crazy excited. The enlist is good because it has like low toughness though. The enlist is not as amazing. Like enlist gets a lot better. Like there's, I think I saw a a one three uh, white creature that had vigilance and enlist. That card was way better than it looked. Um, like the vigilance, yeah. Anyways, but this card is, I think, it's probably fine. Okay, kill on strike team. This card is great. Um, I won a couple drafts with this, <laughs> uh, or a couple matches in draft with this card. Um, yeah, being able to get five power of haste and then give your creatures haste is pretty great. Like, if you're red white, this is obviously much, much better. 
But in, you know, even like red X, this is still fine. You know, you're making a 3-3 three, three haste. Um, I guess like if you bring in two creatures that turn, it's you're still giving two creatures haste. So <clears throat> yeah, I think this is a good card. Uh, let's see, Warhorse, Warhost's Frenzy. Creatures you can control get plus two plus zero. Um, yeah, and if you kick it, whenever creature you control dies, draw a card. Okay, the the kicker is is fun and everything. Um, it can be quite good. But even like without the kicker, this card is fine. Like this is, you know, you probably run it as like a one-up in the deck just to like alpha strike and get in. Um, so I think this is fine. Obviously, if you are also black, it becomes actual card advantage, which is good. So I think you'd, you'd probably run it either way if you have a slightly aggressive deck. But if you're like red-black, this becomes much better. Maria's Outrider. Okay, 4-4 four, four, reach for 5, and then Domain, so for every basic land type, whenever it enters the, the battlefield, it deals damage to each opponent, equal number of basic land types. Yeah, I actually like this card. Um, you know, it's the top of your curve. It's uh, it's 5 mana, but it has it's, it's more than just a 4-4. Four, four. It, it also has reach, which is really good. Um, surprisingly good in red. So, actually, this card is great. And, you know, you can get, like, the last couple points in with it. Um, yeah, I would definitely run this. Um, Molten Monstrosity. 5-5. Five, five, X less to cast, where that's the greatest power among creatures. And then it's Trample. Okay, so, like, in a green deck, like, in a red-green deck, this is very good. Um, but even in, like, a non-green deck, like, say you only have, like, creatures that have, like, a 2 power... You know, this is like a 6-mana 5-5 five, five trample, which I think is fine. So this is like a, you know, decent end-of-the-game curve. Um, if you're, like, red-green, it becomes either, like, probably, like, 5-mana for a 5-5 five, five trample, which is great. So I do like this card, yeah. All right, so overall, red is looking decently, decently good. I mean, you have, you know, some very good removal. You have... Um, I guess you have like a decent trick. You have some good aggressive creatures. Um, if you're pairing this with white, it looks pretty good. And then you have some like decent like fat end game. So you, I could see running red here. Um, it depends on how like I think maybe red white is looking actually pretty strong. Let's look at the green. Okay, you have Quirion Beast Caller. This card's a bomb. Um, I think it's, it's just great. Like, if you play it early and you build it up, it's probably game-ending. Um, if you can make this, like, a 4-4 four, four or bigger, and then whenever they manage to kill it, like, make your other creatures bigger. Um, yeah, because you can move the counters to uh, any number. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's... Okay, so this is really good. Rootwallock. All right, Sunbathing Rootwallock. Okay, so 2-2 two, two for 2. Yeah, this is already a great card. Um, because this is a card that's, that's like, um, if you've ever watched Ben Stark's drafts, I really highly recommend his channel, by the way. Um, he's, he's one of the greatest limited pros of all time, I think. And he, um, he goes in depth talking about, like, kind of what makes a card great in limited. And one of the big things is, its flexibility, like for both early game and late game. And this is a card that really fits well into that, where like it's a 2-2 two, two for two at the beginning, which is, you know, okay and whatever. But like late game, you can pump it up and do stuff with it. So this card is, I think this card is great. I would basically always play it. All right, Broken Wings. Okay, so you've got kind of like, um, what amounts to sideboard hate. Um, maybe if there's a lot of flyers or like artifacts or enchantments in this set, but I don't think there really is. So I think this card is kind of a sideboard card. And then since this is best of one, it becomes less good. Um, this would be much better in like a best of three format. Okay, Deathbone Gardener. 
uh, one one mana dork that has death touch. So I actually don't like this card. Um, it's probably fine, but the point of a mana dork is to get it out early so you can speed up your curve. This one doesn't even come out until turn three. And so like this is accelerating basically your five drops. Um, if you have a lot of five drops, I guess this becomes better. But it's also very killable because it only has one toughness. Um, so you can't really like block with it unless you, you know, and have it survive. Now, that being said, it has death touch. So it kind of acts like, you know, um, you can prevent them from attacking with like their, their biggest and best creatures. So it might actually be good. I, I'm not sure. Like, I'd be so much happier if this came out on like turn two or turn one. Um, obviously, I don't think they're going to reprint on more elves, but. Um, so I'm sort of undecided. Like, you probably play this card, and it's probably not amazing. I don't know. Okay, Scout of the Wilderness. Search your library for a basic land, put in the battlefield tap, and then shuffle. Okay. If you're playing white, this card is good. If you're not, it's pretty bad. Um, yeah. Finding a land on turn three and not doing anything else is, is pretty terrible. But getting two 1-1 um, one, one creatures out of the deal is great. So I'd say if you're playing white, this is good. Otherwise, I wouldn't play it. Um, okay, let's see what else. Weather Seed Treaty. Search your library for basic land, put on a battlefield tap. Okay, and then create a 1 1 green sapling. Target creature control gets plus X plus X and trample. Hmm, since you can read ahead, you can like do any, you can start at any, any, any step. So, I don't know. <clears throat> I feel like. Yeah, it's flexible. You can go get land if you're stuck or whatever. But like a 1-1 one, one is not exciting. Um, and the plus X plus X and trample, because it's like a sorcery speed ability, means you're not getting a trick out of it. And like maybe it's fine. But like this amounts to like, you know, probably plus 2 plus 2 or plus 3 plus 3 and trample. I think this is actually pretty bad. Um... I guess if you're like a three color deck and you need the fixing, sure. But in a two color deck, I probably would not run this. Okay, threats undetected. We talked about this a little bit. Um, you know, provided you have four different creature cards of different powers, which you almost certainly do. I guess this depends on how good your creatures are. So, like, if you have like amazing some really crazy good rares that are at different like power levels and you can go and search them up this could actually be pretty good but if like your creatures are kind of meh and sort of filler i'm kind of less excited it is still card advantage but it's not putting any actual pressure on the battlefield the turn you play it so it i think this kind of depends on the landscape of limited like if the format is slow enough for this to be good it'll be great and if it's like a really fast format, then this is just unplayable. So, I don't know. <laughs> it might be good. I'm not sure. All right, what else have we got? We have Bark Weave Crusher. Okay, 2-5 Enlist. Okay, so typically creatures that have like really big toughness can be pretty good. Like if you, I mean, if you imagine like you have a bunch of guys and they have a bunch of guys and you have some like very high toughness creatures, you can pretty much just stop them from attacking by making them into like awkward um, attacks where you can block in such a way so you get advantage. So depending on depending on the style of deck you have, this could be a great card. Because it has a list, like you can make it into like a build build it into like a four or five or a five five or whatever. So I think this card is actually decently good. Um, in like an aggressive deck, it might be less good, but
but like where this card will really shine is like if you're blue green and you have like flyers going overhead and you can just like sit back and do whatever um you know or like white green if you have flyers you know same idea um this gets a lot better i think in like red green or black green where you're just kind of on the ground like you know you don't have a lot of evasion this is a little less exciting it's probably still fine so i think this is actually a pretty good four drop though i would say um okay moth spirit ancient okay seven seven trample for seven gain five life the gaining five life is not irrelevant because usually when you're playing something like this like you might be almost dead and like need a way to stabilize and that actually goes a long way to making this a better card um seven seven trample for seven <clears throat> in limited is usually fine as like a one of it's it's not exciting but it it can like just get the job done and it has built-in card advantage because they're gonna have to double block or whatever um being seven mana is a huge turnoff, obviously. But now that you're attaching five life to it, this can help you get back into the game and then stabilize. So I could see running this as like a one of. Um, I think it's, yeah, it's it's kind of filler, but it plays a role. And you never would run more than one of these ever. But um, I could see maybe running one. Okay, um, the world spell, talked about this. Yeah, okay, so this is probably, you're just not playing this card. I mean, being real, you're, you're not playing this as a seven drop. Um, I mean, I guess if like your deck is like super stacked with crazy, you know, big creatures, you could potentially play this, but it's seven mana, like I just, I don't know. I don't think this card is probably getting played. If you have like a super, super defensive deck and can just like sit around, like maybe you can have this as like an end game thing, but I don't know. I probably wouldn't play. It's not my style. Yabamaya Sojourner. Okay, eight mana. And then cost one less every type of land. Um. Okay, so you're probably playing this for like five mana. So like a four, six for five or six. This is just kind of, I don't know. I mean, it's 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 fine, I guess. Like it does have big, big toughness. And again, like if you're setting up a board where you have like a lot of high toughness creatures, it makes it very difficult for the opponent to get through. So this, this might be good. Um, in a two color deck, this is six mana for a four six, which is actually not that exciting. So I feel like this is a deck where you need to be playing at least three colors to have this be okay. Um, I could be wrong and, you know, but I, I, I'm not that excited by this card. All right, um, so green, it has some good cards. Um, like you've got the Beast Caller and the, the, the Root Walla, um, potentially this sort of Druid thing. So you have some like very strong early game, and then you have kind of some of these card advantage -y but not affect the board cards. And then you have um, some like decent mid game cards, and then some very big like fat. So I think it comes down to whether or not the pairing color can support it. Um, and then you have Erg, Spawn of Turg. Okay, it's another like big dirtily card. And then you have Zarajanan. Okay, so this card is quite good. 4-4 um, four, four that can kind of pop up your other creatures. So I guess like green-white could be possible. Um, I don't know, I'm not super excited by green. I think red-white might be better. But let's, let's take a look at the red-white deck first, and then just kind of go from there. Okay, so we have... We're playing probably every single white card that we have here. Um, maybe not all of them, but like they're all playable. Um, let's just lay it out and see what it looks like. Okay. And I think like we're probably not playing Amplifier in this deck, because if you're not playing blue, this card is kind of terrible. 
but there's a lot of good red cards we can run, like Strike Team becomes amazing. Um, okay, so do we have any uh, multicolored? Okay, and what are our artifacts? This is a 3 2 for 3, Scry 2. Yeah, I mean, this, this guy's fine. He's filler, but he's fine. And then Meteorite. Okay, so it does two damage to any target and it can add add mana. Adding mana on turn five. Ugh, yuck. I mean it's fine, but it's just this this card is bad, I'm sorry. Like if you're gonna be adding mana, like you, you gotta do it before turn five. Like maybe if you have like a super, super terrible weak three color deck and you really desperately need the fixing, but just Five mana. Oh man, I'm not excited by this. Okay, do we have any lands that help out? We have no, not for red white. Um, would we consider running a third color? Maybe we have. We could go like we have a red green and a green white here. We could try going like Naya, perhaps. Um, but first, let's just look at the strict two color red white deck. So, with 17 land, um, I'm also kind of a fan, depending on the curve, of running like 16 land, you, you know, if it's, if it's a lower curve, and this one looks like it might be. So, I'm just going to, for the moment, change the land count to 16, and then let's look at some of the, the cards here. So, actually, Heroic Charge does have the, the red kicker. Uh, plus two plus one in trample, but that's six mana. It is an instant, which is nice. I, I'm not sure. Like if we're running this, yeah, I, I don't know about heroic charge right now. I think I'm gonna let's let's cut that for now. We might bring it back in. Um, Phoenix check is actually probably fine. Um, Hammer hand. If we're very aggressive, maybe. So I'm going to take it out for now. We might bring it back in. And then now we just need to cut one more card. Um, probably Wing Mantle Chaplain. It's the only defender in the whole deck. And it's very kind of not what this deck is doing. So, what does that leave us with? Destroy Evil. Um... Okay, so destroy a target creature with toughness 4 or greater. I don't know how good that will be. It might be great, but I could see this as like a one-of. Um, it just depends. I mean, like if you're up against green, it's obviously great. But there's probably a lot of rares that this hits as well. All right. Um, okay, so we've got Vanilla Sleeper, Valiant Veterans. Kind of a random 2-2. Two -two. We have... How many other soldiers do we have in this deck? We have one. Um, so far, only one soldier. Yeah, okay, so... This guy is very average. Um... Okay, so this is 40. We've got, take a look at the deck, 16 creatures. You usually want to have at least 15. 15 is kind of a bare minimum that I've had for a limited deck. So somewhere between 15 to 18 creatures is probably ideal. And then, you know, the rest uh, sort of interactive spells. Um, pretty even split on mana. So I'd probably run 8-8 eight, eight here. And I do think that 16 is right, given the curve. Um, you know, I mean, this will probably be... Probably be a 6-drop, realistically. There's a lot of 2-power two, two creatures. We might... You know, if we have like a 3-1 out, it could be a little cheaper. But the other kind of cool thing is... On a turn that you pump your creatures up, like if I were to, you know, Furious Bellow, like for that turn, <laughs> you know, this could 
be significantly cheaper, which is kind of cool. So this could be like three mana that turn. So that, that is kind of a nice, you know, um, you, when you have a deck with this card involved and you have ways of pumping your creatures with like Furious Bellow or Joint Forces, you know, even Flowstone Infusion, um, you know, it just kind of opens up possibilities. Um, okay, so what do we have here? We've got pretty full two and three drop slot. We have some evasion with our flyers, um, which I like. We have sort of the outriders as kind of kind of our later game fat, <clears throat> holding down the ground while we fly over. Um, also getting the last couple points in, which is sort of nice, so we can you know hit them for an extra two to the face. <clears throat> Um, and then we've got like some anthem effects here, or you know, some quick uh, alpha strike effects. We do have some token makers. Um, and the question is, would we rather have like heroic charge or hammer hand? I don't know. I think that. Like heroic charge, it's probably fine. Like our creatures aren't that big, so giving them trample, I guess some of them like this one already has trample. Like this would be good with trample with their four fours already. Most of them are two power, um, so like if we're up against like a bunch of tokens, it could be really good. I don't know if I want this in the deck. Oh, I think I kind of like some of these other, like Furious Bell, I like more. Um, if we had a lot more token producers, I think this would be a better card. Like in this deck, it's a lot of, like, okay, so we have Cavalier, which makes an extra guy, Strike Team, which makes two extra guys. And that's about it. Like if we had like Captain's Call, for instance, I'd be more likely to run something like this. But I think given that we don't, I'm probably not as excited. Hammerhand, on the other hand, I think is actually good here. Um, because our creatures are so average in size, you know, turning off their biggest blocker for a turn and then giving a guy haste seems pretty good. So I might run that over maybe like a destroy evil. I don't know is the problem. Like, it just depends on, like, if this is... This could just do nothing, like, if they don't have, like, an X4. Um, but again, like, the kind of creatures that this deck is going to have a hard time with are big creatures, so maybe this is good. Um, Warhouse Frenzy is also average in this deck. Um... I think there are enough creatures, so this is kind of like Heroic Charge, right? Except it's for one less mana. Um, it doesn't give the toughness boost, but I don't think that the toughness, you know, one extra toughness is not really going to make the difference. So I'm kind of more apt to run like Frenzy here instead of Heroic Charge. Um, maybe Charge is better, I, I don't know. I mean, we don't have black, so we're not getting extra value out of this. So I might run just like hammer hand over the frenzy. I don't know. Like we already have some evasion going on. Maybe I should have like one of these two cards in here. Yeah. Okay. Would we consider running this as a three color deck is the other question. If we would, it would be with green because the green is like the other strongest color. Uh, we also have some nice multicolored cards that are green. So we have Zaro Janin, which is pretty nuts. Um, and then we could also run, let's see, is it just Zaro Janin? It might just be Zaro Janin. Um, we would run Sunbathing Rootwalla, Korean Beast Caller, and. I guess probably like Gardener to fix. Um, you know, then we could run some of these like two fives. The domain stuff gets better, so like maybe we run like the Sojourner. So it'd be like a 
I don't know. To me, I think that for the vast majority, three color decks are just not as good. Like we might have, you know, some good mana for it, but I'm really not trying to play a three color deck. It has to be basically gift wrapped for me in order to play a three color deck in in uh, in sealed. Um, you know, I mean, there's, if there's a high enough power ceiling, sure. But I think that we could look at this as like the red green version. Um, I think that's worth doing, or green white. The red white deck, this looks perfectly serviceable. I mean, it has a pretty straightforward game plan. You know, play a bunch of mid sized creatures, fly over with some damage, and then like force through some of the last couple points with like Hammer Hand or Furious Bellow, Lightning Strike. You know, we have a bunch of stuff to pump our creatures or, you know, play tricks. Again, maybe we have like one destroy evil and then run like heroic charge, you know, or the warhost frenzy. I probably run charge here just because we do have both colors we might randomly get to kick it. I, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's better or not. But I'd probably run something like this. Um if we go this color. So let's deconstruct it. Let's look at green white next. So I think blue is just out. Like I'm not even gonna look at it. The cards are so bad. All right, so if we run green white instead, let's take a look. Here we have Scout the Wilderness, which gets we actually have two of these, so this is kind of cool. Um, got the Crushers. We have our endgame 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, threats undetected. We might run this. And then we've got Root Walla, Beast Caller, maybe Gardener. I don't know if we run Gardener in, the, in this deck. It's probably fine, I guess, because we have... Do we have any 5-drops that we're shooting for. Um, we have Zar Janin and like maybe this Sojourner. Uh, we do have a little bit of land fixing which is nice. So um, I would probably run let's see oh I've got to add some basics here but um, I'd probably run maybe 17 in this in this deck. Okay, or 16, yeah, maybe 16. Depends if we run the Sojourner or not. I, I don't know that we do. Okay, let's take a look at the deck. So, for early game, we have four two drops. Two of them are quite good. We have Destroy Evil, which again might be a good card, might be sort of meh. We have Runic Shop, which is great. Um, and then our three drop is pretty full. Um, we have Death Bloom Gardener, which is accelerating our five drops. You know, or I guess if we're stuck on land. This card seems sort of underwhelming in this deck. We, we don't really have many 5-drops. It's, it's okay. Um, Scout the Wilderness, which is also accelerating our 5-drops, which, again, just don't have that many of. We are making some tokens. <sighs> Threats Undetected. Um, this could be good, maybe. Like, we can go get, like, the four biggest creatures in our deck and then get two of them. Um... Now they have to have different powers, right? So we could get like seven, one of these fours, two, and probably a three somewhere. Like a three. So it's it's actually kind of average in this deck. Um, and if we cut one more card, what would we cut? Oh, probably heroic charge. Like maybe charge is okay in this deck, but it's 
it's just plus two plus one. Can't give him trample. <clears throat> this deck actually looks kind of underwhelming. Um, I think the red-white is much better than this, just because like its game plan is stronger. I mean, yes, you have Zarajanin, you do have the Beast Caller and the Root Vala, but we actually don't have that much early game, um, and we're like accelerating a curve that isn't really going anywhere, and we're making some 1-1s, but then we don't really have anything that we could do with the 1-1s. Um, I don't think I'm running green-white. I think it's it's just not as strong. So let's take a look at red green. Okay, red green. We do have red green lands. That's kind of nice. And then just pretend like those are mountains here, just to save time. Okay, so in red green, what have we got? I do think it's a good exercise, like especially if you're building um, a seal deck for one of these events, to really deconstruct and build each of the different decks, just to really make sure that you have the best deck. Um, it is time consuming, but I think it's worth it. It's also just, it's good practice. Okay, so for red green, this is 40 with 17 land, and we probably would run 17 given that we have some expensive cards. Like again, I don't know, that I'm running this in a two-color deck, because then it's six mana for a four-six, just sort of eh. So we might even be low on playables in this version. Um, yeah, I'm already not super excited. So I guess we could run Meteorite, but this just seems kind of bad, I don't know. Like, you have nice... Like, your two drops, we've got four two drops. We have a couple tricks. Um, Frenzy is also not as at its best here. And then, oh, Wilderness is actually terrible in this version. Okay, so I think red-green is out. I think we're pretty much shoehorned into red-white. Um, let's, I guess we could look at the black just to make sure. So if we're black, and I do think the blue is unplayable, um, like maybe red, blue, black. I guess we could look at red, blue, black because we have Sol Kanar and we have Najal. Um, maybe there's an argument for blue, white. No, I mean the blue is just, it's so terrible. <clears throat> I guess we could look at black white also. Um, all right, so okay with black. This wants to play black green. Okay, so here's our black cards. Um, if we're black green, we do get. Erg, Spawn of Turg. And then, what else do we get? Beast Caller, Rootwalla. Again, I'm not excited about this in a two-color deck, just unless we absolutely need it for filler. Yeah, so we're already, like, we're short on playables for black-green. Uh, we do have a black-green, a couple black-green fixers, actually. Um, I guess we could look at, like, three color, like maybe black-green-white, and then we could throw in... Where is he? Um, get Zaro Janin in there, we could get this guy. Like, this is beginning to look interesting. Um, if we're going, like, black-green-white, then all of a sudden these become good and they fix so black green white actually looks kind of interesting um, we get to take out the weakest cards so this is still decent removal 
um, Toxic Abomination. I'm not excited about that card as much. All right, let's see what else we would add. So I don't think we have any black soldiers. So this guy's probably not getting the cut. 3-1, we could actually now kick with this guy. Um, this is still good removal. We have some flyers. And this guy. Possibly that. All right, so we have a nice big pool to work with if we're... And we actually have good fixing with our lands as well. Like we have a green white and two black green for fixing. I don't know if we have black white. I don't think we do. Yeah. Um, and I guess this might even be playable in a three color deck, although I'm not excited about it. All right. So in this version, um, like, I like, so this is probably a five drop. So this actually is probably okay as a five drop. I don't know if it makes the cut, but it's okay. Also, I don't know that we need this Moss Beard Ancient. Um, it's fine, but we might, we might not need it. So we have a pretty thick three drop slot. Um, Atrocity is probably not good enough considering as a red kicker and it's just sort of okay threats undetected let's see we have four seven two do we have a three yes okay so i mean threats undetected could could actually maybe be okay it doesn't affect the board but it could like if we find like aaron one of these things are like a boost beast caller, like Sarajan and, and Moss Beard Ancient. Like we're probably getting two decent cards. I don't know if that's good enough, but it might be. Okay, Gardener becomes good in this deck. Scout the Wilderness is also good, um, just for fixing. Joined forces. Eh, like it's fine. I don't know that we need it in this deck. Like I'm not ruling it out, but I think we were. It's more about fixing and just getting actual creatures out there. Battle Rage Blessing. We don't really have any like major creatures we're trying to protect. I suppose we have, I guess, some like game threats. Um, Blight Pile is great, just to kind of give us time to set up our mana. Yeah, I don't know that, I think that Toxic Abomination is, again, I don't know how good it is in this in this set, but it's maybe not what we need right here. Um, like we've got Root Walla, Beast Caller, Splatter Goblin, I like all of those. Sleeper, we can use that. Especially if we make some of these tokens, we can just sack a token and get some value. Seems good. Um, I don't know if we need Battle Rage Blessing. So I like our two drops here. Then we've got Battlefly, Repossession, and Runic Shot. Those are all good. Um, what about our threes? Okay, we've got these three flyers, which again, I, I like. I think the flyers are great. Cavalier is good because we can enlist and actually and get an extra token out of it, which I kind of like. Um, Gardener is probably fine because we need the mana fixing. Same with Scout the Wilderness. This might be too much mana fixing. And maybe we just like, I don't know, just do like one of these. Threats undetected. I'm not sure if we have room for this. Um, okay, Aaron. Double white is going to be a little fancy, but it does, it has, it has a really big upside. Like we can sack tokens to make our team big, kind of like that. And then Urg, Spawn of Turg. Um, this could just be like a, a 2-5 or a 1-5 or whatever, which in this deck is actually not awful. Um, it has some late game potential. Then we've got our 3 twos at Scry 2, which we might not even need to play. Um, they're, they're fine, but like we might have better things to do. So 
could see actually potentially cutting some of those. Because I think these other cards are sort of like Soul Tender is great because we can maybe trade and then like get back a creature later. Um, this deck actually looks like a lot of fun. Um, Sojourner is probably fine. It is kind of nice having like a big end game threat with like Ancient. Um, it also might might be it might be necessary because like we don't have like a ton of just super amazing cards. Like if they have like flyers and can just like brick wall our flyers, we kind of need like something like this to get the job done. Um, maybe we cut Sojourner because it's okay. I can see <sighs> as a five mana like four six maybe it's good enough. I'm not sure about it yet. I think next we're looking to cut, like I like all of our twos. Um, maybe we cut Gardner. Cut some of the threes. Oh, you know what? We have too many lands here. That's the other problem. Okay, that, that actually is an easy cut. Let's get some swamps in here. All right, so for a three color deck, let's take a look. Twelve, fifteen. Okay, we want probably two more lands. We've got double white, double black. Double green, okay, great. <laughs> <clears throat> the double black and double white are earlier, but then the green is our fixing, so we need to have higher green. Um, we'll look at the lands here in a second. Um, wow, look at that, Even total even split on the lands. Um, seems cool. So now we're at like 41 cards, if we were to run 17 land, and I think we do. Um, these lands are not, like, that's not going to be our final, like, which, we got to double check our sources, like, okay, with this we have six black sources, um, eight green sources, and six white sources. So... This would take it down to seven green sources, and I think we want. I think we want black a bit earlier because like we don't have as much white early. So if you run something like this, now we've got seven black sources and seven green sources, and then six white sources. That's probably right. Because like we need the green to get the other colors here, um, like white doesn't really happen until turn three. Admittedly, like this is double white, but that's just a problem we're gonna have. <clears throat> um, green and black is like more early stuff, so I think this looks right for the land. And then what do we cut as our last card? Um, not sure. Like, I definitely want, like, this is like, a finisher, because I think we might need it. I like our fives and our fours. Uh, we have some good, um, this is, like, extra value. We could maybe cut a soul tender. Um, I do like them, though. You know, actually, maybe the move here is to cut one cavalier. Um, like the flyers are great, don't get me wrong, but we're getting just like more value with all this other stuff. Everything else is just like extra value. And we don't have a whole lot of removal. Um, we have 
tribute to Urborg, and I guess we have like Battlefly Swarm and Runic Shot. Um, this deck actually looks like a lot of fun, I gotta say. It, it does have a lot of built-in value, it's pretty dirtily. It, this might not be as good as the red-white deck. It, the red-white deck might just be a bit more straightforward. Um, but I do like this deck. So I think this is probably how I would build it if we were to run black, white, green. And like, you, you wouldn't have even have stumbled onto this until you try to like build all the colors and whatnot. So let's try to kind of remember this and then we could take a look at, um, we could take a look at like Grixis for instance. Uh, I don't know that Grixis is gonna get, it's gonna, gonna work, but I mean, we do have some kind of fun stuff for it. We could even, I guess we could even look at Jeskai. All right, so let's restart and let's look at Grixis. And again, I might be going like way too far into the tank on this stuff, but this is a lot of fun. And it definitely really like makes you, because there's no time limit, it, it, like this doesn't matter like, if we spend time like looking and thinking about this. Okay, so for Grixis, we would go with Sulkanar and Najal, which are both decent bombs themselves, um, or at least decent cards. If we're going to run blue, like we'll probably run Shore up because we want to protect these guys. Espionage is good. We probably want some dirtily 2-5s to get in the way. Um, we have some bounce. And then we get Battlefly Swarm. Oh, we probably want the wall. <clears throat> Maybe Splatter Goblin. Um, this actually tribute to Reborn gets better. Storm Collar for the extra value. Um, some more removal. And then I don't know how good Phoenix Check will be in this deck. Because it's you're just not attacking with three creatures that often. Maybe it's fine. Uh, Lightning Strike. Radha. Um, Strike team is probably still fine as a 3-1 haste. Maybe it's not quite good enough, but um, Frenzy gets better. All right. Oh, well, then we, I guess we have, this is sort of dirtily. I'm still not playing aggressive sabotage. It's just not good enough, I don't think. Maybe we run Furious Bellow. Family Interference, I just don't like this card. It's it's fine, it's a cantrip, whatever. Okay, now let's add the, the mana in. Um, okay. That's not the exact mana count, but it approximates it. Um, Okay, and we've also got those guys. So we have red, blue. Oh, we actually have a lot of fixing. We have two red, blue, one blue, black, and one red, black. So we can figure out the land count. Um, let's see, 15, 17, 19. Okay, that's 16. We'll probably run 17, almost assuredly, because we have some, like, bigger fat here. Um, curious of the breakdown. Pretty even split, maybe a little bit more red. But let's take a look. So, right now we've got seven red sources. Let's see, this is 12, 14, 16. We're going to add one land. We have... Seven red sources, six black sources, and seven blue sources. So I guess we add one swamp. 
So we're probably looking like that for an even split. And then that means we got to cut five cards. So we have, we probably want to run Najal um, just as a 5-4. I don't know how many, I guess the question is, how many sorceries or instants do we have? Like we have Tribute to Urborg, Furious Bellow, Lightning Strike. Okay, so we actually have a decent amount. Um, he might be very good in this deck. I don't know that we run all these five drops. Like we, we maybe cut like one of the Outriders. Um, Monstrosity, for the most part, I guess we have some like some three power creatures, so it, it is possible. Yeah, we actually have a decent number of three power creatures, so we could probably probably play this for like five mana, which is pretty good. I like our four drops. They they definitely just kind of hold down the board. Um, I don't think this deck is going to be like super aggressive. I mean, it's already three color, and it's kind of like more like get out some single nasty threats and then. Um, you know, push through with some spells. Uh, let's see, but doing atrocity. Yeah, I mean, there's like a little extra value there. We could like get back one of our like little creatures for a turn. It's fine, I guess. Um, soul tenders, I like. Strike team is okay. It's not as good in this deck because you don't have white. Um, so this potentially could be a cut. Um, even late game, it's probably still fine. Though, like if we play this on another creature, like we give them both haste. But that's kind of better for a deck that's like getting in a lot. And I don't know that this deck is. So I think maybe we cut that. And then we have abomination. What are our creatures on our two drop? We've got firebrand, steel crusher. And Abomination, Splatter Goblin, Blight Pile. Yeah, I mean, those are fine. Like, I'm not as excited about Blight Pile, or sorry, uh, Toxic Abomination. But I think we need, you know, five, two drops or whatever, a couple creatures. Um, I like all of our one drops. I like the Soul Tenders, I like Geyser, I like Espionage. Frenzy, I guess Frenzy is not as good. I mean, we have like a Defender here. We have like these two fives are probably sitting back and are probably not dying. So Frenzy is probably not as good in this deck. Like we have, I guess we have some, some Soul Tenders, so it is like good with those. But we, I think we have enough creatures that are not getting in, you know, all at once. We don't have like a lot of little guys. It's maybe not quite as good. That might be wrong. I guess we have these librarians as, as well. Um, but I think I think we can cut it there. Um, what else do we cut? Like we have a pretty big five drop slot, five and sixes. We could cut. I guess we could cut this outrider. Like. I mean, it, it is kind of nice though. It hits him for three, and it's four four reach. I think these other cards are better, but we... I don't know. I kind of like having it. Um, I guess we could cut a Librarian, but our, our three drops are pretty light as it is. Like, we have Atrocity, two, three Menace, I guess this guy is pretty replaceable. Um, <clears throat> like, we're not getting in a ton. This, this seems like it'd be better in like a red-black deck that is super aggressive. So maybe this is a weaker card we can cut. 
This takes us down to 41. Um, I do like the scry for the three colors, and we also don't have very many threes anymore, so I like those. Um, <clears throat> Espionage and Geyser. I guess Geyser is returning a creature. How much do we care about that? At sorcery speed, probably not as much. I mean, the life gain is a nice kicker, which we won't get. Um, yeah, I probably would. Like, it's it's fine, but it's like if we were getting in more and we're more aggressive, it might be better. I think we're kind of grinding them out a little bit more with this deck, so maybe this is a weaker card. So I'd probably run something like this. Now, with this deck, like, Najal is pretty good. Um, copying the spells, we actually do have a lot of spells. Like, we have this one, we've got Furious Bellow, Lightning Strike, Tribute. Uh, Shore Up, Vortex, Flowstone Infusion, so Najal is quite good. Solkanar is just value. Um, so we can just kind of, like, once we get him out, just sit behind him and just, you know, just do the life gain thing every turn until they die. Um, this is just good to hold down the board. And so this is, like, a much more defensive deck, even though it may not look like it. Um, we're kind of sitting back, finding a big threat, and riding it to victory. I don't know that this is as good as the green-white-black deck. Um, while this deck does look fun, and it does have decent fixing, um, let's take a look at the final breakdown. Yeah, it's almost an even split. Like, if we don't get Solkanar or Najal... I don't really know how we're winning that game is the problem. Because like we have a bunch of like dirtily two fives and some spells that do things. I, I feel like this game this this deck's game plan is just weaker than the green. Like the green white black deck just has like a lot of value. And this deck like has a very kind of narrow plan. So I think ultimately I'm not running this deck. As much fun as it does look. Um you could maybe make an argument for like red blue but like we don't have enough cards in our pool for it to be good so i think that's just out the other deck we could look at is like blue white or blue white black maybe um let's see if we go let's let's take a peek at blue white black because that might be might be pretty good. Like we have Raph and Aaron, and then we have um, three blue white and one blue black for our land count. Let's take a look for white, and then Runic Shack gets a little better. We have Sleeper. Um, We've got all these white cards. I don't know about combat research. Um, we now have cards that like care about Defender, which is kind of funny with this um, Chaplain. Like we have an Academy Wall, <clears throat> and I guess if we have a lot of instants and sorceries, it might be something, but I don't know that we do. This is also going to be a pretty defensive deck. Yeah, like I'm probably not running Atrocity in that deck. Okay, so let's add the land. Um, all right. Let's take a look at the split. Okay, so it's mostly white. Um, here's 19. So 
This is eight white sources. This takes it down to 17. So this is five black and eight blue and then eight white. So if we take it down to seven blue and seven white, we can bring it up to seven black. So now we have a seven, seven, seven split. And then looking at the actual deck, what do we have? We have Runic Shot, Vortex, Shore Up. I don't know if we need Shore Up. Like it depends on if we have creatures we care about saving. And I'm not sure that we do. It might be fine, but might come back to that. Battlefly Swarm, I like all of those. Protector, um, I don't know about this Chaplain. Um, we'll come back to it. Heroic Charge, probably not. The Turtles, I think, are fine, because they... This deck's plan is to fly over the top, plain and simple, and then just hold down the ground. So you've got Wrath, who's great. You can give, like, um, Anthem Effects and Vigilance for your flying team. Um, Aaron, same deal. You can sack, like, minor tiny, to, tiny guys on the ground to pump up our flyers. We want to keep all the Cavaliers in, for sure. Um, espionage is fine. Geyser is fine. Soul Tenders are fine. I don't know that we need the Librarians here. Like, they're fine. Um, but we might have better stuff to do on turn three. Um, cut them for now. And then on turn two, like we have... This Defender is great. Battle Rage Blessing, I don't know that we need. Um, Splatter Goblin. Abomination. Again, I don't know how good Destroy Evil will be. Um, I like Sleeper. Veteran is pretty meh. Like, there aren't any other. There's one other soldier. So I think this is... If we, if we need it, we need it. But like we have one... Two, three, four. I guess we might need it. Um, let's see, what else did we have in the two drop slot? Okay. I'm not excited about it, but we might need it just as a, as a creature on turn two. Yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I guess we can cut it. So we cut Veteran. And then we'll come back to... So we definitely want to keep Tribute to Urborg. We want to keep probably at least one Destroy Evil. And then for our three drops, I, I like Join Forces because it gives our Flyers a way to punch through. Um, and since, like, basically our whole game plan is to fly over the top with these Mesa Cavaliers and, like, the Griffin Protector, like, they have to be able to get through. Academy Wall does give us more defenders for this Wingman and Chaplain nonsense, which makes more flyers, so that might be good. Um, and then we get to, to loot whenever we cast an instant or sorcery. So we have Vortex, Runic Shot, Two destroy evils, that's four, five, six. Yeah, I mean, this actually might be okay in this deck. I, I'm not typically a fan of O5 walls, but in this specific deck for what it's doing, I think it's actually okay. And then we have the soul tenders. Join forces to like finish them off. Um, I don't know. If, I don't know if we need join forces as much. Maybe it's fine, but like, if we're gonna have, I think that this might we might need this battle rage blessing actually, um, because if they have like a big flyer, we have to be able to kill it somehow, and this will let us do that. 
Maybe we cut a destroy evil. I just don't know how good this card will be. Um, and I think I like the rest of what we have going on here. I think this is also a 16 land deck. Like, it's pretty low curve, so... Uh, we have the most white, the least blue. We can probably cut one blue source and be okay. So 6, 12, 16. Now we're down to 41. Um, so we just need to shave one card. Um, let's see, I like everything on the ones and twos. I like our threes also. I don't actually know what to cut here. Like, all these spells are great. Um, this kind of buys us time. Um, like Soul Tender is nice to get stuff back if they kill our flyers. This just this gives us value. Um, yeah, so we gotta make one cut. Maybe maybe we cut one Soul Tender. Otherwise, you know, we do have a lot of spells here. Um, I don't know that Geyser is as important. It's, it's it's fine, certainly. And it, like, buys time for our flyers to get through. How many creatures do we have? Let's see. We have 18 creatures. Okay, so we're a little heavy on creatures. But that's also good. Um, especially with cards like Aaron, where we can sack creatures to make other creatures better. I guess I could see, like, cutting one Soul Tender and leaving the Geyser in. You could go either way on that. But something like this looks great. You know, I might keep in the Soul Tender and then like cut the geyser. One of those two, I think, is what I would do. Um, so this deck, unlike the other deck has a much stronger game plan. Um, this is much better than the Grixis deck because our game plan is really clear. Like we are being defensive on the ground, setting up our flyers and flying over for the win. Um, we have three Cavaliers, a Griffin Protector, and then the Wing Metal Chaplain will we'll make some like tiny little 1-1 one -one flyers that we can send over. Um, you know, the other thing I was, I was thinking here, actually, Geyser, we might want Joint Forces instead, just to help push our Flyers through. That might be... Yeah, you go either way. But at any rate, um, it also helps protect our creatures on the ground. Um, so maybe, maybe I could run Joint Forces over Geyser. Yeah, something like that. Anyways, so pretty clear game plan here. Um, survive on the ground, get flyers to fly over. The mana is really pretty good, actually. Um, I don't know that this is better than the green-white-black deck. I think the green-white-black possibly is even better than this one. Um, it doesn't have maybe as much of a clear plan, but it does have more inherent value. So, like, while this deck has a clear plan, um, like, if you don't happen to draw one of the five flyers, you're just kind of sitting there. Um, I guess Battlefield, Battle, Battlefly Swarm is another one. But, like, that is going to be a long 20-turn clock. <laughs> so, I, I think as much fun as... And you could certainly run this deck. Like, you've got... This to pump your guys, you have like joint forces. Like it, this deck does work together with itself. Um, 
Yeah, so like, you know, you have good good spells, like walls on the ground. There'd be nothing wrong with running this deck. The green, white, black deck, I think, is more fun. Um, <clears throat> so I could see going, yeah, either uh, green, white, black, or blue, white, black. Um, again, we also could just go just red, white. Uh, we can look at, I guess, Jeskai and see if that's even a deck. Um, so again, red, white, we've got a couple cards here. If we're looking red white, I think this is this is the deck, and then we had sixteen land. Um, here we go, red white. Okay. And I don't think we had any fixing for land. But I don't think we need it. I mean, 8-8 eight, eight is fine. So, considerations here. Um, let's look at this deck's game plan. It, this deck is pretty aggressive, right? We've got... Like, the destroy evil helps with big creatures we can't deal with, because we kind of, like, are, are low on the ground. We do have some flyers like flying over for the win. Um, and then we try to get like some chip damage in on the ground. We have like Firebrand, we have one, two... I guess, we're, I guess we really only have like three two drops actually. I didn't realize, but we don't have as much stuff going on on turn two. So this deck is actually not as good as those other two three color decks, I think. Um, I guess maybe we have to run, like, Valiant Veteran and are sad about it. Um, yeah, maybe Red White's not as good as I thought. Um, like, Strike Team is obviously amazing. But this is kind of like an, I guess, sort of like an average aggressive Red White deck. Um, and then what are we adding if we make it just Guy? Like, I guess we get Geyser which helps. Um, I don't really like Tide Pool Turtle in this deck because it's trying to be more aggressive. We have like Bounce. So we bring in, what do we bring in? We bring in Bounce, we get Wrath, which definitely helps push through damage. Um, and then we get like some land fixing. I guess we bring in Najal. And Najal, we have Runic Shot, Vortex, Flowstone Infusion, Bell of Lightning Strike. Okay, Najal is going to be quite good. We get some mana fixing, which is great for Jeskai. Um, I mean, it's better as Jeskai than it would be if it was just Boros. But I don't know, I don't know if it's good enough. All right, let's fix the land. So we need some islands. Um, and then the split is gonna be mostly red and white with a little bit of blue. Okay, that's, that's actually not great because we have Nijal, which is double blue. Okay, so here we have 14, 17, 19. This deck probably would run... If we ran it like this, it's probably running 17. So this is going to be 9 blue sources, 
seven red and seven white. Okay, we don't need as many blue sources then. So let's Okay, so now we've got eight white sources, eight blue sources, and six red. Okay, so we can maybe up that a little bit. So now we've got eight white, seven red, and seven blue. I think we want more red. Like, we can probably... What if we go seven white? So now I think we have we have seven. Okay, we have eight red sources, seven white, and seven blue. Yeah, this might work. I mean, you could maybe go like six blue sources and and eight white sources. But I think you want to have seven because you've got this double blue for Nijal. Now we just got to cut some cards. Um, I don't know how good Heroic Charge is. It's, it's fine, I guess. Like, it's, it's good for the Cavaliers. I don't know that it's necessary. I guess, like, we do have some tokens, so maybe, maybe it's worth bringing back in. Um, our one drops, we have... I don't know about Hammer Hand either. These four I like. Destroy Evil, maybe we go down to one. We might need it. I mean, it might be good, because like we can't... We don't have a lot of big creatures. Um, but I think that our cards kind of get us through. Um, Veteran is bad. It's just a 2-2. Two -two. We don't have many other... Let's see, we have one, two, three... Four. I kind of want at least five two twos, so we, we might have to play it. Um, but I'm not excited about it. If we cut it, what else do we cut? Like I like Drain Forces. I like I like our three drops. Maybe we cut like a Librarian. And then I like our late game, actually. Like, I really like these Outriders. Maybe, I guess we could possibly cut one Outrider, but I kind of like this, this, this late game. I guess we have, like, Join Forces and Furious Bellow. I don't know that we need both. Um, hmm. Our guys are kind of lower toughness, so maybe Bellow is a little better. I could see like cutting this and going kind of like that. <clears throat> yeah, I mean like this deck is this deck is pretty solid. Like Najal definitely does a fair amount. <clears throat> like you have bounce, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven spells for Najal. Um, you've got these Outriders that will do three damage to the opponent. You have... This guy's probably coming in for five or six, I guess. He might be a six drop. But, I mean, like, with Pump, he's probably a little easier to get out. I guess, you know, what you could do is you could cut Monstrosity here and maybe... Play like the join forces instead or even like the vanilla tutu that you need just to to not die so maybe we bring this guy back in um like this deck has a plan i mean you're you're getting in with flyers you're you're kind of a little aggressive on the ground um you have some extra tokens. You're doing like a fair amount of stuff here. Um, 
you have some good removal. You have some some like late game in. This this deck actually does have a fairly unified plan. I think this deck is probably the closest one to the green white black deck in terms of viability. So I think it's really I know this has been like a long rambling video, but um, this is important when you're when you're building in sealed. Like you've got to look at all the options, and like it does just take time. I think. <clears throat> so I think we've narrowed it down to um, green, white, black versus Jeskai or red, blue, white. I think they're both good. I think that the green, white, black deck might be more fun. It has a little bit more inherent advantage. Um, this deck maybe has a clearer plan. Like this deck's plan is get some early chip damage in, play flyers, win with flyers, burn them out with like Maria's Outrider and Najal. Um, if you don't get your flyers, like there's only four flyers in the deck. So it might kind of peter out. Actually, we've got five flyers, excuse me. Um, it might peter out a little bit if we don't like get the flyers on time and like we get like roadblocked on the ground. We do have ways to push through, like we've got Lightning Strike, Furious Bellow, um, Bounce. So it's, it's still got a pretty good plan. I don't know. What do you guys think? I would love to know in the comments which deck you guys would go with. I do think that it's between Jeskai and, um, I can't think of the guild name for green, white, black, but that deck. The others are just not quite as strong or don't have as good of a plan. I do kind of like Jeskai and I like what this deck is doing. Um, the mana fixing in both decks is pretty good. This has 16 creatures, um, seven non-creatures. This is probably how I'd run it. The only, I guess the only considerations, I might run Join Forces here. I don't know how good Destroy Evil is. If this card is not great, then maybe you replace it with Join Forces, which I think will always be good in this deck. But I mean, like, we do have a hard time with, like, big creatures, so this is nice. Although we do have some bounce. Hammerhand is also probably fine in this deck. I don't know what I would cut for it, though. Maybe. Yeah. I guess I, you know, I probably just run Giant Forces instead of Destroy Evil. I mean, it's it's fine. You can do either one, but like I know this is gonna be doing stuff. I'm not sure if this other one will. Let's look at that Green Black deck again. I think I probably run Green Black because it's just more fun. Um, I don't know. I I like the Jeskai deck too. Don't get me wrong. Like, let's just take one more look at the plan that the um, green, white, black deck has. All right, let's get the land. We've got some fixing. And again, I don't know about Deathloom Gardener. I think we didn't have it in the final build because we have other ways of getting stuff. This is maybe fine, but it, I don't know. It just seems kind of not as exciting. Okay. 
let's get the land count going. All right, we have, I think this is a 17 land deck. Um, maybe it was only 16. It might only be, need to be 16 because of Scout, but I sort of like 17. I think we had an even split too, so we've got seven black sources, um, seven green sources, and I guess six white. Let's see, what is this? 5, 10, 14, 17. Yeah, I think seven seven six looks right. We have some double white, but we also have double green and double double black, and green will help us get the other colors. This is forty two, um, forty three. I think we didn't need the librarians, as I remember. Like it's they're fine, but they're. Not as interesting as these other cards. And I think we ended up cutting one Cavalier and the deck looked like this. So we have one, two, three, four, five, five two drops. Um, I like our one drops. We have tokens, like we're, we get to sack our tokens to make our other creatures better. Um, we make a decent amount of tokens, and then like we can like recur stuff with Soul Tender. Um, we have this Erg Spawn of Turg thing that can be like a late game thing that'll do stuff. Otherwise, it's just like an O5 wall. Um, we have a bunch of walls, and then yeah, so we we kind of fly over for the win. Um, we just sort of grind out with value make extra tokens, make our guys bigger, um, put extra tokens on stuff. And actually, like, okay, Zarajan with Enlist is kind of silly. Like, if you... Because the Enlist taps in without putting him into combat, and so you can just kind of go go nuts with... This is a sick combo, actually. Like, turn four Barkweave, and then turn five Bajan, and, like, Enlist him um, the next turn, and just... Ugh, it's kind of mean. Um, Ancient gives us like an in-game path, which I like. I do want to get this third Cavalier in here, but I think that this is kind of a more measured approach. Like if I were to cut something for it, I don't know what I would cut. Like I want, we need our early game. Like we have a couple pieces of removal, but not a whole lot. Um, we have Graveyard Recursion. Yeah, I think that this deck just looks more fun. And then like Beast Caller is also gonna grow and sort of get nonsensy. Same thing with Rura. Um, this can be a 5-5 late game. I think this is probably the deck to play. <clears throat> I wouldn't fault you if you went with Chess Guy, <clears throat> but in the grand analysis, I think that this is the best deck. So, now we have our deck building. Um, oh, we can also run Destroy Evil on this deck. I forgot about that. Um, or Join Forces. I don't know if we... Like, Join Forces is very good, obviously. Um, yeah, I don't know. Destroy Evil... Like, we're less worried about big creatures because we can outbig their big creatures. It's still, like, a good card, obviously. It's removal. But I don't know what we cut. I mean, this... Yeah, like, we're not kicking this, so this card is, like, a minus two, minus two. Do we care about, like, if they have two twos? Like... 
we have a lot of like two fives and like as crazy as it sounds, maybe Tribute to Urgorg is less good than, than Destroy Evil in this deck. Um, I don't know. In, removal is always good, obviously. Um, but I mean, like, if they had big creatures, like, that's, like, one potential roadblock for us. Like, I'm not as worried about their... Like smaller creatures i guess if they have like small flyers we don't have a whole lot of reach so that could be a way that we lose um, we only have like a couple flyers of our own yeah i don't know what like i'm not sure what to do here maybe we did go destroy evil um I think it's fine with Tribute to Reborg. We're just going to have to get a feel for how good this card is in the format. Uh, this is probably better at taking out their bombs. Okay. Um, yeah, we will... I think this is the build. We're going to submit, and then we will see you for round one. Um... Again, with all the nonsense that we have for like making tokens and like or, and pumping our guys, I don't know that we need join forces as much. We just want like extra creatures. We have 18 creatures. We have a pretty high creature count, but that is, I think, a good thing. Um, I don't really want to cut any of our creatures, so I think this is the build. All right. We will see you here for the first round.